Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss about two of the important topics. The first one is deletion vectors and the second one is liquid clustering on delta tables. Now, before we start with this video, it is very important that you have seen these two videos, which is the video number 29 and 30 of the playlist PySpark Zero to Hero on the YouTube channel Easy Data. The reason is this two video covers the partitioning and the Z ordering techniques on delta table. And it is very important to understand before we can start with liquid clustering. Now, liquid clustering can help you improve performance of delta tables where you have data with high cardinality. So it is very important that you see both of this video before starting with this video. So if you have not seen those videos, I recommend you to go back and watch those videos first before starting this video. So without any delay, let's begin. Okay, let's start with deletion vectors. What exactly are deletion vectors? So in a normal data scenario, whenever we modify a data in a particular parquet file, the whole parquet file will get rewritten, right? That's a general scenario in a delta table. But consider a case, you have millions of data in a particular parquet file and you just try to delete one of the record. In that case, the whole parquet file would be rewritten and that's an optimization issue. So what is the solution here? The solution here is to add deletion vectors. So what Delta does is consider you have millions of records written into a parquet file and you just want to delete a single row. So if the table is enabled with deletion vector, a particular vector or say a flag would be added to that row, which is deleted by you. In that case, the data will not be rewritten. Rather, the row in that parquet file will be flagged as deleted. Right. So next time when you read the data from that particular parquet file, only the rows which are not marked or flagged will be read. OK, so this is how the data will get deleted. And next time when you run your maintenance, which is optimized or your predictive maintenance, which is the predictive optimized command, automatically the parquet file would be rewritten and all the rows which are marked for deletion would be removed from that parquet file. And this is how deletion vector works. I am in my Databricks workspace. I have already created a new notebook called Delta Tables, Deletion Vectors and Liquid Clustering. And I have already turned up my compute, which is easy with Data Cluster. Okay. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to read a CSV file, which has been provided by Databricks at this location. You can also read it from the same location. This data set is common for everyone. So in order to read a CSV file using SQL commands, we are going to use a utility called read files first. Okay, so before we do that, let me just write a select command in order to see if we can read the data. Okay, so to do that, I'll write select star from and we are going to use a utility called read files. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to provide the path from where we need to read the file. So I'll just copy this from the top and I'll put it in single quotes. And next, we need to provide it some options. So we already have header in this data. So I'll write header and with implies, I'll write true. And we also need to give the format. So the format for the data is CSV. Okay, now that we are done, let's go ahead and run this cell. Awesome, we can see the data is being read properly. It also has a rescued data column, which is generally used in case the schema does not match. But that is not a concern for us right now. So we are able to read the data using this read files utility. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a table on top of this. To do that, I'll just use a CTS command. So I'll write create table and we'll do it under dev bronze. Okay, so I'll write dev dot branch dot sales and I'll put as. Okay. So I'll rerun this. Our table just got created. So let's verify that. To do that, I'll write select star from dev dot branch dot sales and I'll run this. Awesome. Now that we can see data in the table, let's go ahead and write a describe command to see the metadata of this table. To do that, I'll just write describe extended and the table name. So let me run this. Awesome. We can see the metadata of the table. So if I scroll down to bottom, you can see the table properties here. It says enable deletion vector as true. It means the deletion vector is enabled for this particular table. Okay. So let's go ahead and first run off the deletion vector and then we are going to delete the data and then we are going to turn it back on and we are going to again delete the data. So to do that, I'll just type alter table and the table name I'll type set TBL properties and I'll make it false. Okay, so this is the property that you need to use for deletion vector, which is delta dot enable deletion vectors. So first, let me just turn this off. So I'll just run as false. Awesome, this is done, right? So let me just go ahead and run the describe command again. 
this is done and if i go down you can see it says enable deletion vector is false now that we have already disabled the deletion vector let's go ahead and delete an invoice number which is 540644 from the data to do that i'll just write delete from the table name which is dev dot branch dot sales and i'll put the condition where and i'll copy it from here and i'll paste it and let me put semicolon and run this awesome it says number of rows affected is 35 it means 35 records are deleted okay so let's go ahead and write describe history to see what has happened for this delta table so i'll just write describe history and i'll copy the table name from here and i'll paste it here and i'll run this nice now you can see the history of the table okay the first one was ctas then we disabled the deletion vector right it is false so this is what happens when we do not have deletion vectors enabled okay and then we deleted the record based on this condition which is invoice number and this 540644 okay let me scroll to right and you can see the operation matrix here so if i expand this now you can see the delta has rewritten some of the files so it has removed the two files and it has added one file okay and if i scroll up you can see num deletion vectors added is zero so it is not adding any deletion vector flag rather it is rewriting the files when the deletion vector is not enabled okay so this is the default property of a delta table in case a deletion vector is not enabled so the data will get rewritten again okay now we will enable deletion vector but before that you need to know deletion vector works with delta lake 2.3.0 and above and if you are running it on databricks runtime then you have to have 12.2 lts plus okay now let's go ahead and enable deletion vector on this table again okay so to do that i'll just make it true and i'll rerun this so it says okay let me just go ahead and run the describe command here as soon as i do that scroll down you can see the property here deletion vector enabled is true okay so it, it has enabled the deletion vector let's go ahead and remove another invoice number from this table so i'll just go up and copy one of the different invoice number from here so i'll scroll down and now I'll delete this invoice number from this table. Okay, so let me just run this. It has deleted four records now. Okay, so if I scroll down and run the describe history now, if I scroll to the left, so you can see the delete has happened. Before that, we have changed the table properties, set deletion vector as true. Okay, so you can see the delete has happened for that predicate, and you can see the invoice number here. Let me scroll to right and expand the operation matrix now. Now, if you see, we do not have any files removed rather we have deletion vector added okay so it has added for four rows deletion vectors were added okay and if you see number of file added is zero it means the data is not rewritten rather it has added deletion vector flags for the records that we have deleted and later when we run the maintenance or it goes into predictive maintenance which is the optimize command it will automatically remove those flagged records while rewriting the parquet file okay so you can even do that you can just write optimize command right now with the table name so you can just write optimize and the table name in order to run that maintenance so it will automatically remove while rewriting all the rows that were marked for deletion vector okay so now you know what exactly is deletion vector let's go ahead and check what is liquid clustering now in our previous videos we have seen optimization techniques like partitioning or z ordering but in all of those cases there was one demerit we have to rewrite the data whenever we try to optimize the table but there is one neat way Delta table has introduced something which is called liquid clustering. So whenever you enable liquid clustering on a particular column in a delta table, you don't need to rewrite the data. The incremental data will automatically get adjusted as per the cluster column that you have mentioned. Okay. So what are the scenarios where you can go ahead and use liquid clustering? So you can see here the below examples. So in case you have a high cardinality column on which you need to filter data, you have significant skew in your data or your data is growing too quickly. Okay. And in cases you have different access pattern of the data or in case you have some data where you have too many or too less partitions okay in case of liquid clustering delta table will take care of properly repartitioning the file sizes for the clusters that you have selected for the data okay you don't need to worry about it only thing you need to do is you have to provide the cluster columns on which you want to query or you want to filter or you want to join your data okay now i'm back in my databricks workspace so in order to use liquid clustering you need to have delta lake with version 3.1.0 and above or you can use databricks runtime with 13.3 lts or above okay now in order to do a liquid clustering on an existing table or on a new table you just need to provide one thing that is cluster by okay so we already have our sales data here right now okay with this table let me go ahead and copy this from here and if i scroll down i just need to type on an existing table alter table i need to provide the table name and then i just need to write cluster by 
and the column name on which I need to cluster. So consider I want to filter the data based on invoice number. So I'll use cluster by invoice number. Okay. And I'll just need to run this. Awesome. The command completed, right? Let me just go ahead and write describe history and the table name. And let me just run this. Now, if I scroll down, you can see it has added a thing called cluster by and it says which column it has to look for clustering okay the new clustering column is invoice number okay and it will upgrade some of the protocols for your table so you don't need to worry about it it will take care of that automatically now in case you don't want to cluster your table and if you want to go back you just need to put none here okay if you don't want to cluster your table and if you want to go back to a simple table without clustering you just need to mention cluster by none okay so this is how clustering can be done what if you want to do on a new table? In that case, while creating the table, so I'll just copy the create table from top. And I'll paste it here. So while creating the table, you just have to mention cluster by and the column name. So invoice number was our column, right? So you have to mention like this. So I'll just make it as CD and I'll rerun this. So you can see the table is created. Let me just go ahead and do a describe extended on this table now. Now, if I scroll down, you can see here, it says clustering columns and you can see invoice number. Okay, you can have more than one column as clustering columns plus only limitation is you need to have the column within the first 32 columns in the delta table. Okay. That is the important point that you have to note. That is the limitation. Other than that, you now you don't need to worry about anything. You can just go ahead and do a select star from this table. Only thing that you need to do is you have to make sure that you are using the clustering column in the filter or the predicate. So if I do a select star from the table where I'll just put invoice number and I'll paste it here. Okay. If I run this now, you can see this has run so fast and this will become evident as you grow your data millions and millions. And now the best part is once you have incremental data loading in this table, you don't need to worry about maintenance. The new data will automatically get clustered properly and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So that's the benefit of liquid clustering. And that is how you can improve the performance enabling liquid clustering on your delta tables. I hope you have learned a lot about delta tables till now. In our next video, we are going to talk about volumes. And regarding the delta sharing, we are going to see delta sharing towards the end of our series because delta sharing also requires user permissions that we will see when we try to figure out users and permissions for our Databricks. Till then, keep learning, keep growing and keep sharing.